Hey y'all, today I'm going to show you how to make red beans and rice. All right, let's just get right into this. Everybody knows what red beans and rice is. The first thing you're gonna need is a pound of dried red kidney beans, canola oil or lard if you have it, raw bacon or salt pork, bay leaves, dried thyme, garlic, yellow onion, celery, green bell pepper, brown or white sugar, chicken base, salt, pepper, cayenne, scallions, and andouille sausage. For a full list of ingredients before we get started, check the description below. So the first thing you want to do is you want to soak your beans. And if you're a planner, like I am, you'll soak these the night before so that you're not waiting a million years for your dinner to be ready. But if you forget, there are other tricks that you can do. This is a pound of beans to so about six cups of cold water. And, oh lordy, that happens. <laughs> and, um, We'll let that soak overnight. I only lost like two or three beans, it's okay. If you're in a bigger hurry, what you could do with the same pile of beans is throw it in the pot and uh, bring it to a boil for about two minutes, turn that off, cover it for an hour. If you just wanna just go straight into the recipe, you can do that also, but it's gonna take probably a couple hours longer for the beans to get soft and for you to eat your red beans and rice. So we got our beans soaking. What we're gonna do first is mince some garlic. I like a lot of garlic. Let's do four large cloves. Go ahead and give it a smash with the peel on. I don't actually smash too much because then it becomes a problem to separate the good from the bad. And that would be the skin from the clove. And give that a little bit more of a smash. And then here's a little chefy trick for you. I take a little bit of salt and I sprinkle that over the garlic. And what that does, it just gives it a little extra abrasion to get that mince going. And then, you know, it doesn't hurt to salt throughout. I'm a fan of that. Let's dice an onion. Take my knife using the claw method, doing like this, and I go down this way, and then I'm going to come in through here, lengthwise, not all the way through, and then I go down. There's my dice onion. Again, it doesn't have to be a perf perfect dice because we're going to cook the crap out of these beans, and the onions are going to disappear for the most part. All right, we're going to dice up this green bell pepper. I cut the top off, I pulled the guts out. It does not have to be perfect. That's good. Let's do three stalks of celery. So ratio wise, I'm using mostly onion, but it's all pretty close to the same amount of each vegetable. I wouldn't measure it and go cup by cup because I don't think it matters. I think if it's all roughly the same amount, you're good. So here is your holy trinity. One of the major flavor components of a good pot of red beans and rice is pork fat. You've heard me before, pork fat rules. If you wanna use bacon or bacon pieces to start off your pot of beans, you can. I'm gonna use salt pork today. And you can use canola oil to cook in, but today I'm gonna use lard because I want extra, extra flavor. Usually what we do at the restaurant is we have bacon ends, we save bacon fat uh, while we're cooking all of our other various dishes. I personally at home, I always have a container in the back of my stove where I collect bacon fat or really any pork fat that might happen while I'm cooking other things. And I just hang on to that. And if it gets to be too much or I don't, I'm not using it quickly enough, I throw it in my freezer 
which is where this comes from. So I have my salt pork. I'm just doing a, a small dice on this. And we're gonna start the cooking process with this in the lard to start building our flavors. And then we're gonna saute our veg into that. And then we'll melt the beans into that. It'll be a very porky red beans and rice. So this is about a quarter pound of diced salt pork. Another major flavor component of most of the stewed dishes that we do at the restaurant, not necessarily this brand, the uh, andouille sausage, which is a smoked pork sausage. I'm not actually gonna cook the andouille into the beans, uh, but we do instead so that you really have your andouille experience at the restaurant. We actually just slice our andouille in half and we sear it, get that little crisp and release some of that meatiness and we actually set that right onto the top of the bowl. Or if you want it at home, slice it in half and just cut that into half moons. You can throw that into the pot of beans at the end or you can saute it and put it on top of the beans so that you have a, a flavor contrast between the creamy beans and then the slightly crispy and dewy sausage. And then the last thing I'm gonna do while I'm uh, prepping is I'm gonna thinly slice my scallion. This is for garnish at the end. I like a nice, fresh, slightly sharp, oniony bite with my savory food. Scallion is my second favorite vegetable. I'll tell you my favorite one later. Maybe you can guess it. All right, that's it. Okay, we got our beans soaked, all of our stuff's prepped. Let's turn the stove on and let's start cooking. Going over a medium to high flame and I'm putting a giant spoonful, a giant and a half spoonful of bacon fat. If you have lard, that'll work too. If not, canola oil is fine. I'm just, you know what? I'm looking for flavor and I'm going for it. I'm gonna put my quarter pound of diced salt pork in here. I'm gonna render that until it's crispy. It's also gonna melt out. It's gonna add more pork fat flavor to this pot of beans. In the beginning stages of this cooking, I'm gonna add two dried bay leaves. I always add my dried herbs in first in the beginning because that oil is gonna help it to bloom out. Just remember, dried herbs in the beginning, fresh herbs at the end. A teaspoon of dried thyme. Pretty much put thyme in all of my Creole pot cooked dishes. That is a standard. And I'm gonna let this brown and render for about four or five minutes. Now that the, that's rendered and it's crackled in my face a couple times because the water is escaping the oil, I'm gonna add my four mince-ish garlic cloves. I'm gonna throw in the whole onion. And then I'm gonna also add in my celery. Three full ribs. I'm gonna get this nice and soft, a little brown. It's gonna take about, again, another four or five minutes. I'm not adding my bell pepper yet because I don't want my bell pepper to be completely disintegrated by the time we're done cooking. Okay, so that's been sauteing for about four minutes. It's a little brown and the vegetables are softened. I will go ahead and add my bell peppers now because my beans have been soaked overnight and they're gonna, not gonna take a million years to cook. Pound the beans to about six cups of water. And you can see it's gonna need more water and more time. I'm gonna add instant chicken broth. This is something that we use at the restaurant because when we first opened, we did not have space for anything really. I, I didn't have refrigeration at all. So we use a chicken base with water for all of our chicken stocks. And what I'm gonna add right now is two cups of water, and I'm just using that same pan where I was soaking my beans because I don't wanna lose any flavor. I'm gonna add a full heaping tablespoon of chicken base. You can find this pretty much any grocery store. 
in the soup aisle. I'm gonna incorporate this. I'm just gonna pour this in here. And then this is actually gonna need to go at least an hour until your vegetables have softened a lot and your beans are soft and creamy and the beans start to thicken from their own starches. It's been about an hour, but that was with pre-soaked beans. Really what you wanna do is you just wanna keep an eye on it, test the consistency of the beans. You can see right now the, the vegetables are still there, but they're pretty disintegrated. There's, the beans have gotten creamy and they're soft. So I'm gonna go ahead and lower the flame and start seasoning. When I seasoned uh, earlier with that chicken base, um, it did, there was a little bit of salt in there, but we're gonna put some more salt. I'm gonna start with about a teaspoon of salt, a teaspoon of black pepper, a teaspoon of cayenne. And I'm gonna give that a stir. I'm gonna taste as I go. And that's what I, I would advise you to do. I can give you a measurement, but I can't predict your palate. You gotta cook the way you want it to taste. Let's give this a little taste. Whee! It's good. Um, I'm happy with the salt level. And then one last little trick that we do at the restaurant, we put a little bit of sugar in the end. And I'm talking for this recipe about a half a teaspoon of sugar. If I had brown sugar, I would prefer to use that, but I don't have any right now. So I'm using white. But just that little, little bit of sugar is just gonna make everything come together. Man, that's good. The only thing that would make this pot of beans better is if you could wait till tomorrow to eat it because it's just gonna get better after sitting and marrying overnight. That's it. That is the real deal. I'm gonna ladle some beans into my big shallow bowl. I am, I'm happy with this. Put some steamed white rice right in the middle. And then to that, I'm gonna sprinkle some minced scallions. I like a lot of scallions, but you do you. And then we have our seared and dewy sausage. And there you go. Red beans and rice with andouille sausage. A is rolling. We are actioning now. We are actioning. <laughs>